Hey everybody, this is Luca Mino, welcoming everybody back to Learn to Unlearn. This is episode four. This is gonna be a little bit more difficult uh, as far as um, the episodes are concerned because I, I wanna talk about fear, um, being a man and all, and how men are supposed to be stoic and fearless and all this nonsense. Um, no front here, this is all straightforward. This is all open-hearted, open-hearted surgery. Um, it's terrifying. I want to call this the uh, the fear of it all. Um, and I have some stuff written down, so please excuse the fact that I have to uh, read every every once in a while. Um, and it's going to be important because some, some of the most important stuff is what I wrote. So I really need to get this out. Um, it's terrifying, okay, going through all this, because what we're talking about through this series is a return to health through healing. So it's absolutely terrifying for me at best uh the feeling of not having control and it can easily induce panic if we're not used to learning how to speak to our own bodies and let it know basically that everything's okay um that you know we're going to work together and you know all through this the heavy breathing and i'll be talking about that also um when you see all this as a challenge as a game, you know, to get to know yourself better. It's just you and me, kid, you know, literally, you know, it becomes more fun and more tolerable. So yes, I use breathing techniques that I never knew I had before, never even had to use them. <clears throat> um, it just came naturally, breathing with the body, anticipating what's going to happen, if you can, um, reducing the body's stress as much as possible. And so we get to a really good story here because, and this is all relevant, okay? Um, my first teacher, he was a Mi'kmaq from the Mi'kmaq culture in uh, northern New Brunswick in Canada. Uh, you go to his house and uh, you go to the bathroom and first thing you see on the wall is a sign that says, please sit down to water the flowers. Perfectly serious. Please sit down to water the flowers. So, you know, uh, the people that stand up at, to, to urinate, the men that go over there and stand up, they're basically told to please sit down. And if they don't, to please never come back again. You know, because at our place, this is what we do. We sit down to pee. Um, it's an older tradition. It's really cool, too, when you get used to it. And uh, as far as the body goes, what, it takes maybe a week and a half to two weeks to start a new trend or to start a new habit or to kick an old one. So, um, sure, okay, so that was one of my first teachings with him. So, okay, you know, I go to his place and I sit down. Before long, I was sitting down to pee at my place. And it makes things a lot cleaner for a lot longer time. You don't have to clean as much or as hard. Anyway, it doesn't fly around all over the place. Um, so, basically, this was how... I did things, and um, I'm telling you this story because it stuck with me, and uh, that's all I've done ever since is sit down. So with my condition, it makes it a lot easier and a lot more comfortable to urinate. It becomes more natural too. The thing is you can't see anything until you get up, and that can be quite devastating because you know you go up and t you go through intense moments of passing blood clots and then you get up and turn around and there's the toilet bowl it's blood red um and i'll show the pictures um i'm not sure about that i never really thought about doing that until now but um it's graphic but i would like to show people what it looks like i mean it's you know <clears throat> I'll, I'll decide in editing what, what i'm going to be doing but uh, you know, I, I remember saying to myself, the first time I saw the blood clots, it's like, you know, it's okay. Remember, you know, breathing deeply, do what you have to do, you know, and there's a whole entire process to follow, you know, completely different process. When, when, when I had the catheter, not one, not two, not even three, but four, four catheters I had to live through in, in probably the last seven, eight months to a year um, through all this time. And how certain movements would send shock waves through you, um, not even being able to, to bend down to tie your shoes, let alone putting them on. It's a whole new world, right? You have to 
learn the restrictions, the messes that you make, because the, the leaks that the catheter does, it leaks like crazy if you don't, you know, if you move a certain way, and then there's cleaning it, and then there's yourself, and then you don't, not being circumcised as well causes the problem because it has to be washed every single time uh, that you, you go to the bathroom. And this is something that, you know, again, this is something that I felt myself. My body, you know, your instinct, whatever you want to call it, the little voice, uh, you get that little voice that says, you know, every single time you need to wash. And again, somebody else who want to cut corners or whatever, nah, it's not important. You know, I don't need to wash myself every time. And poof, there you go. An infection comes up. Um, especially with catheters, they're known to cause infections after a week and a half. It was a mess. So, but something told me you need to wash every time, either after you do number one or number two, whatever. Um, and I'm grateful that I listened. After a while of following those patterns and doing what your body tells you to do, not this, but what your body says and needs and not arguing with it, magic starts to occur. And you get better. You will get better. Your body is always trying to heal itself. And this is something that a, a Native American or a spiritual person will tell you. Your body is always trying to heal itself. He says the problem, uh, my teacher anyway, said the problem is we just don't let it. We don't allow it. Um, from those who don't have a clue about what we're talking about to those who do but want to take the easy way, uh, to those like me who have learned to, you know, no, I'm not going to take the hard road again. No, that's enough hard roads for a while. I'm going to sit down, I'm going to do the math, and I'm going to wise up. Um, listening to the body is so crucial, especially at that time of stress and anguish. Um, when you learn to, to back off and to let your body decide, you know, for itself, and you throw your arms up, and it's like, okay, you know, it's hard at first, but then slowly, uh, being dedicated to follow that way of thinking and your, your body thanks you and shows how appreciative it is. Um, I'll give you an example. You know, you, you're sitting down and you have the catheter inserted and it's like, you know, oh, uh, I want a coffee. Uh, and your instinct says, uh, Luca, that might not be a good time to, no, I'm going to get a coffee and the heck with it. So you force your way upright hurting yourself as you try and, and, and get up, swearing the whole time, I'm going to get the coffee in my body. What happens? Your body rejects it completely because it strains the urinary tract at the best of times, and it's not what you need at the present time. And then complications arise, just like we talked about that infection that woof, showed up. Same thing here. Complications arise because you're not listening. Catch my drift. Uh, rather than wanting a coffee, then sitting down and listening, what does my body think? And all of a sudden, you're going to hear, no way, Jose, not at the present time. No coffee, thanks. We're stressed out enough down here, thank you. Are you kidding me? Right? So, I mean, this, this, is, this is pretty simple, really. It's a matter of, of choice that we have, choice that we have to take. And for me, it was pretty easy to figure out. The lazy boy became my best friend for weeks if not months i kid you not months on end weeks on end people would come over and visit me and see me sitting down like i'm paralyzed or something just like or it's same thing as if you were in the hospital and you can't move and you have the nurse coming in to check on you all the time same thing sit down in that lazy boy and do whatever you have to do watch tv watch a movie watch two of them uh, right on Facebook, just sit down and try not to move. Those are the messages I was getting all the time. And uh, I, my body was saying it, and I was reacting very strictly to it. So that's exactly what I did. And that's probably one of the only reasons why I'm able to sit straight on this stool right now for that long a time without hitting pause and running somewhere or having a problem somewhere. Um, and doing this show because I listened to my body. I'm not, I'm not out of the woods yet. You know, I didn't listen to some doctor trying to make money from, from me and, and my, my situation. We'll get to that in a second. Um, again, meditation, as I've spoken of before in, in the uh, previous shows, uh, meditation works wonders for, for us to reach the point of being 
okay and listening to the body and stuff and Reiki as well, which I'm doing or which I have done, putting to use now uh, when, when bad times show up and you know, it's just you and you're by yourself. The ER is always there as a last resort. Um, but there's a certain amount of pride and you know what I'm talking about uh, going, going through heavy trauma by yourself and being able to say, I did it at the end of it. What a great feeling, right? And on to the next chapter, on to the next scenario, right? It's like, you know, th this is what it's like. Every single day is a battle, you know? People say uh, month by month, you know, day by day, minute by minute is what it is for me. So uh, you want to hear about my last oncology visit? Okay, we're going to do a little parentheses here. I got to tell you this. You know what I just did? I just did about 20 minutes of my show. And then I looked down on the bottom and it says, I didn't even record. So we're going to start all over. Um, I just had to throw that in because that's exactly what happened just now. I didn't hit record. So now I've got to make sure, is it recording? Yes, it is recording with the little red button on top. Okay. Um, so you want to hear about my last oncology visit, do you? Uh, I think it's very timely since we're talking about listening to ourselves and how you feel um, and, you know, trusting the process. You know, we got to trust how we feel and what our insides are telling us. Okay. Diagnosis. I got to go over this way because the camera can't see you over here. Um, okay. Not one, but two cancers. Hmm, two over here. Um, one from the prostate and a very aggressive cancer as well. Um, and I'm told by my family doctor before going to this oncologist that they were going to give me the very best treatment, uh, unquote, uh, that modern medicine has in store for me. Reluctantly, okay, you know, so I accept and I say to myself, okay, deep inside, I know that I'm never going to forget this doctor's visit. And I know deep inside that I'm not going to take the chemo and the radiation that they're going to be offering me, but I'm blowing the story. So I'll, I'll, I'll keep going. Um, so I get to the uh, oncology office and the waiting room is, is, is enough to bum anybody out because um, you go in and there's, you know, two rows and a TV at the end, like you always see in the waiting room. Um, one woman is sitting there with no hair and a scarf over her head and she's talking to her husband what looks to be like her husband and she's holding hands and you know she's moving her leg like that because she's nervous and across the way there's another woman with those things in, in the nose for for the uh you know the tubes for for oxygen that she needs to breathe in order to live and you know on top of the tv there's a sign that says faith hmm. So when it comes to be my turn, um, I go in and in comes this gentleman. He looks like he could have been off the plane from either Madagascar or, or Pakistan. He, didn't, he couldn't even hardly speak a word of English. He says to me, um, you know, he, he greets me and, you know, we, we do the um, nonsense stuff, you know, the general stuff, the BS stuff. And, and then he explains to me gently and he's really trying to find his words. It looks like he was really trying to be careful about what he was saying. He says, um, uh, this is modern medicine, Luca. Uh, this is the only thing we know how to do uh, for your condition. So um, we're going to do 13 weeks of intensive chemo. And then we're going to, uh, as if that's not enough, we're going we're gonna to open you up and we're going to take out the prostate and the bladder together. And then from that, we formulate or we you know we, we make a uh, makeshift bladder that goes back in where, where the where the ancient where the other bladder was and that you know they send you home with a catheter and you know figure it out i looked at him and you know to be polite you reiterate what the person says so they know you're listening right uh so i said to him okay this is modern medicine and this is the only way you know how to do things you're giving me 13 weeks of intensive chemo, and if that's not enough, and I did say it, uh, you're going to go in there and take my bladder and my prostate out, 
and then make a bladder for me or even put uh, plastic or whatever they are, those bags outside of you. Um, surgically, you know, with, with the tubes coming out and then send you home with a catheter and work it out. If the chemo doesn't kill you first, a byproduct of mustard gas, these are all eugenics tools to depopulate people. They don't care about us one bit. And if they did, they wouldn't be poisoning the air, the soil, the food, the water. Um, and if you count the poisons that we have, anyway, that's, that's another show. No, it's not, because that's in my notes right here. Uh, one thing I have learned, and I am reading, forgive me, because this is very important. I have to follow my notes, because I have a lot, of, a lot to say. We're getting close to the end anyway. Um, one thing I have learned is that our bodies are perfected machines that have been bombarded with chemicals, with poisons, with unnatural substances, almost our whole lives from birth. And they're really getting effective at that. They're very good at that now. Um, and, uh, you know, for most of us, it's like poisoned air, poisoned food, poisoned soil, poisoned water, only now to try and fix that. And we want results right away, right? We're, getting, we're very impatient. You know, it doesn't work that way. Uh, we spent our whole entire life poisoning us, poisoning ourselves, and now the body, you know, can only do so much so fast. Um, this is why food, the body's fuel, right, is so important. But unlike any concerned parent, I'm not going to be sitting here scolding anybody or even myself. I'm just going to share a little bit. Uh, and this portion of the show is going to be called The Food Fight for a very good reason. And am I still recording? Yes, I am. Okay, good. Uh, this is very important. Depending on how much of Big Pharma that you, you're already a prisoner of, um, and it'll vary from person to person. For me, I have a connection made on the inside. I'm very lucky because I don't have diabetes. I didn't develop any other kind of complex diseases that modern medicine says you need meds for, etc. cetera. Um, I try my best to eat healthy, and most of the time I can use others around me as a barometer to remind me to, to you know, be strict, um, stricter than most people are uh, in their intake, in their diet, which brings me to a very important note, okay? Radical change of any kind, it's like they told me in the beginning of my spiritual walk, you know, you want to learn really, really quick and you don't want to, you don't want to work and you don't want to take your time. Well, guess what? Radical change of any kind, it's not favorable because, and this is what I think, uh, the exaggerated, the hardcore, the unnatural and not fitting to your routine way of doing things, it can possibly do more harm than good. Um, I've heard stories about people that are diagnosed with cancer or some other serious illness, and they go home with a big garbage bag and they take their, uh, you know, they open up their cupboards and they're throwing everything out in the garbage can. It's like emptying all the cupboards out, only to go on a diet that totally grosses them out, that they won't enjoy, they don't find it motivating in the least, and it won't last. So I said to myself, you know what, better to eat normally and to train myself to eat less of the stuff that I know I'm not supposed to eat because I'm a lover of pasta, bread, cheese, bacon, you know, this is, you know, it, it, it's all relevant. So um, instead of saying never again, which is what people say to drugs, right, you know, never again, um, you don't say never again. So you know what, In, instead of saying never again, which is the automatic reaction that most people will have never again, you say not today, or not now, you know, instead of saying never again, it makes a big difference because never again is final. It's you know, you have to discipline yourself for it. And it's not going to work. Not today. Nah, not right now, you know, and then you develop your pattern from that. And I've really hoped you you've enjoyed uh, listening today. Um, and this is all about healing. This is all about the ad lib thing, you know, because yes, I do have notes to read, but I don't want to be reading like this and have people think that I'm, you know, I can't do that. So what I'm trying to do is both. And I'd like to apologize again, because my reading is not exactly the way uh, somebody like a, a normal reporter would, would be reading or somebody of that nature, but um, it's, it's something I'm doing because um, I've been scared to read. I've been like a little kid, terrified of reading 
because I've been told I can't read my whole life. So this is a skeleton of the, in the closet that I'm uh, dealing with at the same time as I'm doing a show for whoever is interested to help in the healing process. And I hope um, people give comments as well and enjoy the show and tell me how I can make it better. Uh, there's going to be pictures. Some of it's going to be graphic. Um, it's going to be a, a good journey. I can feel it because um, I'm already working on show number five. So we'll see you next week and thanks for listening.